Uh, welcome back to the 69 Beetle again. And um, underneath that giant goat screw there is a speedometer. Now, of course it couldn't show me its fussing initially when I had everything out of there. <laughs> it, it's almost like, it's almost like even if we get the speedometer fixed, I find out there's the bezel is bent <laughs> after I get it all back in. The, anyways, I uh, hooked the speedometer cable to it and uh, took it for a first drive and it squeals like a pig. So it's it's got to come out of there. And uh, it's, it's uh, oh, it ought to be just a breeze. This should be simple, you know, just a couple of bolts and it should come right out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, the flasher is going to have to come out of there. This. Oh, that shouldn't be too bad. Maybe I can access it with that. Maybe it's accessible after you do that. So, let me get in there and look. I, I'm not at all thrilled about doing this job. I'm just not. I'm just not into it. But okay, let's get it out. Let's see how hard it is. Okay, there's a bracket here that's in the way. That bolt is going to have to come out. And that one there also. So let's take that them out of there. I wonder what else is attached to that bracket. Oh, I think... I think the bracket holds the relay. Maybe the whole thing will come out of there very easily. No, no, it's not going to. Before you start screwing around around that fuse box, disconnect your battery. get that out. There's a Phillips screw there and a Phillips screw there. But all those wires are going to have to come off first. Let's just cut them off with wire cutters. Okay, I'm I'm trying to get behind these lights and not pull the ends off because when you pull the ends off, you try to pull the ends off, the 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 light disintegrates, the holder does. So I'm getting behind the holder with a pick and a pair of needle nose on the uh, terminal and just slightly, really carefully pulling them off. I'm labeling my holders one, two, and three on the bottom. Then there's a black wire and I know that all the black wires are positive so I know that that's the, uh, that that's the positive f for the instrument cl cluster. And then I'm going to go left and right and maybe up or down. I know the browns are ground, so uh, shouldn't be too bad. That's nice. It's probably a bulb. No squealing. Okay. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. What it means is the penetrating oil that I sprayed up in there has probably penetrated the it's probably right here where it's where it's seized up and it's probably stopped it. That doesn't stop us from the 
the light bulb that's dancing around in there and the fact that this squealed at one time probably needs to be investigated and we need to take it apart. Uh, I'm not taking this apart just because, just for, just for grins. Uh, there is a real reason and I put this back together and it just squeals again I'll be very unhappy. Uh, so let's uh, let's tear into this as gingerly and as carefully as we can. Uh, first thing I'm going to take off is this vibrator for the vibrator for the uh, fuel gauge and uh, I'm going to take the fuel gauge out too I believe let's have a look at that so let's see even see if that will come out These plugs are lights that are not used. Uh, automatic stick shift, that sort of thing. There's your fuel gauge. So let's see. Do what I think I'm gonna was going to have to do. Because of the access hole, I might not have to. Probably not. That is. I don't know what this is. It's a piece of stick or something. It's like somebody's tried to get a there's another bulb in here, I think. Let me wiggle this around a little bit, shine a flashlight in there, and see what I can come up with. Okay, word of warning. Don't shake your speedometer around, because the needle just fell apart on it. Nice, huh? Well, I have another speedometer here. Uh, so, what I might do is I might take the... Uh, but the, the lens is dirty on the inside, so I might have to take it apart. But it is, this is from a 69, or, or a 68, and this is a 69. So, uh, they have kind of comparable deals, only this one says ATF, and this one has a temperature, which is the same thing. It's just a slightly different speedometer. If you look at the codes on the back, uh, this one says 7 of 68, and this one says 7 of 68, the one that came out of it, and this one says uh, 6 of 69. So if you look at the faces of them, they have about the same, but they have slightly different. This one uh, has a little gauge instead of it saying oil, 
and uh, instead of it saying ATF, this one has, which is kind of funny because uh, this is the older one, and this car is like nine of uh, 69 or eight of 69. It's almost a 70. So probably I would rather have this speedometer in it. Uh, evidently the car that I picked was a 69. So both of these are period 69 speedometers. It's just which one you want to use. And quite frankly, if that little bit of handling broke that broke that needle, well, you know, you probably would have broken the car, I would think, because I didn't do too much to it and it just fell apart. So uh, we're going to operate on this one, and uh, we'll take the lens off of it, clean it up, take it apart, and see that it see that it works properly. We'll chuck it up to a drill first to see if it works before we go any farther. Now if you notice I'm giving it the same kind of revs I'm giving it the same kind of revs that I gave this one which showed 60 miles an hour. So we do have a hang up on this one still. And uh, so, but we can, we'll save it for parts. The odometers will be different, but realistically, what are you gonna do? Okay, uh, let's get, let's get into, uh, let's get into this. And uh, put our bulb and our screw two pair of glasses and uh, how you get into these is you you're going to have to uh, pry this little lip off very gently and very gingerly and there's a, a glass bezel with two lips or two seals so you have to be very ginger with this I did the same thing to the 67s. Uh, and uh, I had to clean it. All right, let me try to get this off there. We'll examine this later. We'll see if we can't just clean that 
without having to really disassemble it because uh, I really don't want to dis disassemble it. like this. Don't lay your speedometer down on the face. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to well oil all these and grease all these with some really light oil uh, and, uh, and uh, work it a little bit, run it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start with some really thin stuff like uh, WD-40 and uh, work up to some machine oil. Don't, don't spray it. Just get a little bit coming out of the end, a drip. Just a drip. Don't spray it because you don't want it to spray onto your face. And you can't really tape up your face. Don't spray it. Just get a drip out of it. Okay, I'm going to drip that on every one of those little cracks. Don't spray it. You spray it on the face and you go to wipe it off, you'll wipe the black off of it. Okay. Incidentally, it's backwards on your drill. feels like it had some grease on it and so it'll be okay if you put a little oil on it it'll rehab that grease I'm using a little it's almost like uh, sewing machine oil uh, it's kind of stuff I use for my clock I have a grandfather clock and uh, occasionally I go through it and oil it all the little brass gizmos so it runs Oop. I'm going to stop that all of a sudden I've stopped it and I heard it go ding 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 on that let me get down on that That's going to be nice. Okay, we're going to set this aside. And then we're going to clean, let's clean the case up a little bit. So I'm going to kind of wheel the outside of this. Uh, I've got to put, I'm going to have to cut these off and, uh, and uh, put my end on there and inside here are the gels also uh, if you can recall in 67 I had stole the gels out of this one so we're gonna have to steal the gels out of this or what I can do is I can pry the, the top off of this hey I tell you what we'll do let's pry the top off of this and let's just shut this door. We'll clean that one as well.
gonna come out of there. Gels are still there. Let's use this case and let's slip these inwards in there. set this down and study this a little bit. Okay, what I did to get this in here is I reached in here and I just pushed right here and, and, it's, and it just popped right in place. So we're going to take and put our two screws in. This little stud thing right here has to get lined up. screws. It's imperative that you don't touch the face of the speedometer. Especially try to clean it. I wouldn't clean it at all because it's it's so delicate. So delicate. I'm going to clean this face and then we'll pop it back on. Okay, if you have not pried too wildly on this, it'll clip back into place. And I remember that these pieces of dum dum up here were at the top, so I'm going to put that exactly back to where it was. And there's two slots that they go for the, to the side and it should clip back into place without too much fall to rock. I think one side was worse than the other. One side, yeah, I think this side, I'm going to slip this side in. It has a little spring kind of a work it around and snap your lens. <laughs> Try not to. And if we do, it's not the end of the world. Train. stuff on that. Oh, incidentally, there's the other light bulb that came out of it. Let's take it back off. And I'm going to very gingerly bend this out a little bit more with a pair of pliers. So I'm grossing pliers for glass. They're very flat at the ends.
you get the idea. This one here come off the, because it's got this wacky connection on there, so I know. I know our gas gauge works, so we're going to use this gas gauge. This looks right in there. Sounds like he's got a miss in it, too. You get the idea. Still retains the same case number and still has a period correct because we discussed the cases here. They're, they're both for 69s. It's just the one's early and one's late. That's all. And uh, here's the other one. I just kind of tacked it together just to keep it all in one piece and uh, our light bulbs. Uh, we'll put our light bulbs in our bag and uh, let's get this back in the car. Um, I got a look at this. There's a positive wire going on this side. Does that say G? Yeah, that does say G, so that's the line going to the ground to the fuel to the fuel tank. If you ground that, the fuel gauge will go all the way. So we have a positive there, and then we have a ground. Oh, okay, from the fuel tank. All right. Uh, I'll have to find that. I took it off, and I don't know where it's at. I'll have to look up underneath there and see. I found it. It's this wire. Now, um, this I was having problems with. Uh, that's the positive for the sending unit but this one here that group of wires right there the you can't see it I folded it back but essentially this little brass connector is broken so I'm gonna have to fix all those wires I'm going to pull them through the center there uh, and get inside the car and uh, put a new quick connector on there and I'm just gonna connect all of them to one uh, it has a little deal with a jumper, but I'm just going to connect it all to one. Do you see it? Oh, isn't that clever? It's magnetized itself, so it won't drop off. See the other one? See, here's the situation. You have to, you have to keep track of all your nuts and bolts because uh, I know you're not going to believe this, but the, uh, the fuse panel here is magnetic and will attract, and, and it's, it's the bizarrest thing you've ever seen in your life. It not only attracts ferrous metals, but every other metal as well. All right, and usually they lay across the bus in a way that it starts the wires on fire. So uh, keep track of all your nuts and bolts because that fuse box will get you every time. 
Okay, I'm going to snake this in here, but I can't do it one-handed, so I'm going to have to put this down. While you have this in here, uh, with the screws loose, see if you can give it a couple of little... kind of to center it. And go around front and see if she's in there square. Make sure nothing Captain Obvious is wrong. I think we're okay. And then what you're going to want to do is take the biggest Phillips screwdriver you have. You could even put a, put a vice grip on the end of it and then just bear down on those screws until you're vibrating. No, I'm joking. Just snug them. There was some dum dum around this too, like uh, some white dum dum. Too, and uh, it had cracked. And where I had put it in, I, I didn't take it off of there, and it just fit. It fit back up in that channel of of dum dum, if you know what I'm talking about. Looks like I got a battery light. Better switch it out. Okay, let's remember where all these went. First thing, before I put it in, I put my black wire on the tickler and the uh, and the uh, wire going down to the uh, gas tank on the Fliberty gibbet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the G side is the gas tank. Uh, it says G on the back of the um, vib vibrator, I guess. I don't know what it is. It's this little unit back here. You can just barely see it. And then there's a positive wire on. Now, I know that this black wire, right cheer, and the black wires are all positive, are all hot. So we're gonna put that one on there and see how that slides in and out of there? Yeah, ain't gonna make it. I wonder if it's broken, it probably is. Let's see if I can put a little snug on it without breaking it. Probably not. They're very flimsy. All right, let's see if I can get that on there. Okay. This says, I know where that one goes. This says RT, which is gonna be right side top, which is opposite from the correct right side because I'm facing the back of the speedometer. But it doesn't matter, whatever you, whatever you want to use for schematic. Okay, that's in there. Uh, uh, this is one, two, three. This is LB, left bottom. Hmm. Gotta be as bottom as it's gonna get. Oh, that's nice. Just when you think everything's great, the hole disappears. Just when you got the ball, the lights go out. Oh, now this one is going to be uh, right bottom. So that's gonna go here. This is obviously a ground. That's gonna slip up on there. Um, yeah. About like that. Okay. And that leaves. Uh, let's see here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? That's this one right here. And that one right there is for 
the right, no, left top, and then we have one, two, three at the bottom. So let's get those in place and we should be good. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Make sure you get both your grounds. Uh, there's a ground on either side uh, where the bolts, the machine screws that hold the speedometer in place are. Uh, slide those on and then put your bracket right here. You kind of got to uh, take your relay and fold it sideways kind of sideways and then slip it in there and then fold it back up. There's a bolt up here that's going to be a real mother to get because I'm not going to take this out and then uh, the bottom bolt shouldn't be too bad because we have the uh, fuse box disconnected from the battery so no arcing will take place. Uh, let me cuss and swear a little bit and get some of these bolts in there. Okay kitties, I'm going to show you the difference between a shitty socket and a good socket. Okay, that's a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, uh, and when you put your 10 millimeter uh, nut in there and it, and it disappears balls deep where you can't get any bite on anything, that, sir, is a piece of junk socket, okay? A real good socket would have a lip on there inside that would only allow about that much travel, okay? This is, this is one of those 10 cent husky things from, from uh, Harbor Freight. Unfortunately, uh, I lose uh, 10 millimeter sockets. I, I buy them by the gross. Uh, so, uh, you know, I buy the cheapest ones I can because I'm just going to give them away anyways. Uh, I figure if I dig and dig, I could probably find my Snap-on collection uh, of a quarter inch uh, sockets and I would show you one, a standard that the the uh, the machine screw won't go so far in but uh, that is the definition of a crappy socket right there probably stemming from the operatio we did on the um, brake test light I probably did a number to that and this wire goes to the terminal here And it's a switch to turn your heated back glass on and off. And uh, it's the it's the light that goes to that. So let's put a new terminal on that and we'll snake it back through there and put that on there. And then we'll give this a little test drive with Toby. Oh, I know you're not going to believe this, but if you don't put that on, yeah. Sometimes in order to snake that through there, you can use the aid of a helper wire, maybe a little heavier piece, wrap it around there. Yeah, it's funny, it doesn't want to come off now. Yeah, it came off 37 times going through there. Hmm, don't want to come off now though. Hmm, that's funny. Hey, did you see that washer? Where'd that go? I'll have to start all over again then. Okay, I found it, so you won't have to start all over. Um, there's our connection for our that we made right there. All right, let's give this a little test drive. All right, let's uh, see here. Turn the power on. There we go. Nothing's on fire, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's dandy. Fuel gauge doesn't work, but that's great. works. Hmm. 
fuel gauge. Let's check our positive and see what we got. Let's check our ground too. Another disintegrated end, so I had to crimp another one on. Okay, contact. And there she is. Gas gauge works too. Okay. There's no dim on that at all. It's either on or off. Oh well, it's the original switch, so what do you expect? Rain, some folks may get over three. From the 401 Storm Center, I'm Mike Morgan. Yeah, works. Let's take it for a drive and see if the speedometer screams at us again. Test drive, don't you, Toby? <laughs> Well, the speedometer cable hasn't snapped off going backwards. That's a good thing. However, it does not work. squeal. That's fabulous. That's just wonderful. Wind outside is blowing about 30 miles an hour, so I'm just kind of skating all over the road. All right. All right. It's great. Be sure and sing louder, kitties, to drown out the sounds of your neighbors as they're traveling in cattle cars to the re education centers. Those who do not study history are condemned to repeat it. <laughs>